Thank you, Lord Monse. That'll be all. Well, how does it feel now? Fine. Just fine. Good. It shouldn't give you any more trouble, but of course, if it does... Well, of course, I'll be back immediately. Well, thank you, John. And thanks for fitting me in at such short notice. Not at all, I don't think. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm leaving the country on the 28th. Um, you'll have them ready by then. The 28th, sir? I doubt if we can possibly have them made up for that date, sir. Oh, come now, this is only the 10th. You shall have them for the 27th, sir. Thank you, that's better. <clears throat> uh, may I take details of the address, please, sir? Um, Good morning, sir. Morning. I'd like you to make me up half a dozen bow ties. Moss green, Irish poplin, with a device. What manner of device would that be? I'll draw it for you. As it happens, sir, we have something very similar in stock. Oh, really? Yes. That's exactly what I had in mind. Would you care to try it on, sir? Yes. Yes, I would. In here, sir.
Craig Sterling, Sharon McCready, and Richard Barrett, the champions, endowed with the qualities and skills of superhumans, qualities and skills both physical and mental to the peak of human performance, gifts given to them by an unknown race of people from a lost city in Tibet, gifts that are a secret to be closely guarded, a secret that enables them to use their powers to their best advantage as champions of law, order, and justice. Operators of the International Agency of Nemesis. Half an hour ago, I got an emergency call from M7 in London. They are, as you know, responsible for keeping NATO's top secret documents. Nuclear disposition... The f -R. Hmm? What makes you say that, Sharon? Well, it's the ace in the deck, isn't it? Yeah, you are perfectly right. Well, yesterday an attempt was made to steal it. I thought the security on the air fire made the crown jewels look like they were lying around in Piccadilly Circus. Well, that is a reasonable analogy. Isn't it also true that only nine people have access to the fire? Correct. And one of them, Lord Monsey, was the man who made the attempt. Monsey, but he's an ex-minister of state. Eaton and Balliol. Not to mention the Athenaeum, the beefsteak at White's. I agree. It sounds incredible. The old British Empire's really gone to the dogs, eh, what? Uh, oddly enough, Craig, I don't find it funny. Sorry, sir. Watch the drill this time, sir. Well, the three of you are booked through to London this evening. There you will make contact with the head of M7, Major Duncan. Nancy was caught because he didn't know the type on the F file was magnetized to operate an alarm system the moment it had moved from the vault. All I'm now is, who was Monsey working for? And what information has he leaked about the security system? What has Monsey got to say about it? He says he took the file on impulse. He has no idea why. So he hasn't admitted that he was working for a foreign power? No. Nothing beyond what I've said. That sounds a pretty feeble story. Yes, yeah, so we have experts interrogating him. We'll get the truth eventually. May I see him? I'll arrange it. And you're afraid the opposition may try again? Yes. And I'm afraid the next time they might succeed. Which is why I've called on you. I want you three to make an attempt to take the F file. You want us to steal it? Yes. And if you fail to pull it off, I'll rate our security as perfect. You flatter us, Mr. Duncan. Not according to Mr. Tremaine. You agree? Sounds like quite a challenge. Good. The front of the vault is Abaddon and Jones, shirt and tie makers in the Brummel Arcade off Piccadilly. The man on the left is Clive Pulver, manager. His assistant is David Hollis. Both, of course, are agents of M7. Now, they have the code passed to the vault, but no knowledge of further coding. And the passcodes? This month, it's an order for half a dozen bow ties, moss green, Irish poplin with a unicorn motif. You, uh, draw this device. And a similar tie is produced. That, of course, is not to scale. You're invited to try it on in here. In reality, this room is an elevator. The start button is on the mirror beading indicated by the arrow. Once the elevator has descended to corridor level, the operator has 10 minutes in the vault. After 10 minutes, a time clock cuts off all the power. Now, uh, let me show you. The sliding steel panels here and here are controlled by electronic test panels. And presumably the authorized person gets the key to the test from you. That's right. Well, the first panel consists of a pattern of lights. Now, one of these bulbs is a light, and the operator must press the lower buttons to form a design around it. Now, that's the formula the day Monsey made his effort. The next door is controlled by a musical key. A sequence of notes played on this keyboard opens it. Now, if Monsey is a traitor, he'd have passed the formulas over to the opposition. 
This obviously doesn't matter because I would have changed them. However, there is a limit to the permutations and it's this that I want you to test. There's one further piece of information. Once he was caught by the magnetized type which activated the gas trap. There are other safeguards. The last one, if you get through all the others. Look, you must understand the uh, importance of these secrets, these documents. The last one. The last safeguard, if any intruder appears to be getting away with the F file, is programmed to kill. With an eight dial system on the vault itself, each with a hundred digits, I mean, where does one begin with only ten minutes? You stop the elevator before it hits the bottom. Yeah, that might cut the alarm system, but it would also cut the juice to the test panels. And if you happen to get through all that steel, and it looks like you're getting away with the F-file, bang, you're dead. Somehow, well, here's the unknown safeguard. Why do we agree to this in the first place? I didn't agree, you didn't agree. Anyway, we are in it up to our necks. Monsey. Monsey, that's the intriguing factor. The man who has everything? Yeah, the millionaire's millionaire. I don't care what Cloy Duncan's instructed you to use on me. I've said all I'm going to say. I've already told you. I'm acting on my own in this. I don't have any instructions from Duncan. Won't you believe that? Questions, questions, questions. Really very pretty. Do you like a cigarette? Thank you. Pretty things are dangerous. What have you to lose? <laughs> it's a good question. Questions, questions, questions. What were they? Pretty and intelligent. A fatal combination. For whom? Whom? I've always thought that for whom was rather pedantic. So they asked you why you took the F-file and whom you were working for? Ten thousand times. Do you mind if I ask you for the ten thousand and first time? My reply will be the same. So why bother to ask it? Because I want to hear your answer for myself. Are you a human lie detector? Perhaps. I've already used the mechanical test. I'm not interested in that. Let me tell you. I saw the graph. It looked like a cross-section of the Himalayas. Lord Monsey, did you take the F file? Yes, I did. Why? I've no idea. I've absolutely no idea at all. I must have had a mental aberration or something like that. So you weren't working for some foreign power? No. No, I wasn't. Do you believe me? Yes, I believe you. I doubt if you'll convince Duncan of that. The interview time's up, miss. I hadn't realized there was a set time. My instructions were 20 minutes. In that case, I still have five minutes. I'm afraid not. You'll have to leave. Now. Save your energy. He's a very stubborn fellow. I'll see you again. I shall look forward to it. One, one last favor. Yes. Try and get him to switch this intolerable light off. I'll try my best, but I can't promise anything. tell me the easy way. Well, if Monsey's passed the information to the opposition, he's told them where he gets the code from. Duncan? Check. You think Duncan keeps the code programs in his office? He might. I mean, at least if they're going to try and break this thing, now that Monsey's failed, they're going to have to look there first. Mm. So, we got to beat him to it and stop knocking ourselves out trying to crack the electronics. You in a hurry to get back to Geneva? Yeah, it could be. What's the verdict on Monsey? Well, he says he doesn't know what he was doing with the F-file. You think he's sick? I mean, mentally sick. I don't know. He hasn't a record. How have you two been getting on? Well, I think we've come up with a shortcut. 
We're going to toothcomb Duncan's office for the electronic codes. When? Now. He's in a hurry. Magda will wait. You know, if Morty is not in with the opposition, we've got nothing to worry about. Duncan's security must be watertight. You're quite certain about Morty. I'm sure he was telling the truth. Still, it wouldn't be the end of the affair, would it? See you. Yeah, bye, McCreeny. Obvious. This looks much more promising. Thomas Hardy. Still careless, leaving around a maximum security document like this in a drawer? Suppose he was doing it deliberately. Well, I'd trap the opposition. They ought to trap us.
We've been following you for some time, sir. Your driving is erratic. I haven't gone above 40, sir. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, sir. I'm talking about your driving manner. Have you been drinking, sir? A couple of glasses, that's all oh, you got. I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to take the test. Look, I've already told you... That... If you refuse, sir, I'm afraid we shall have to ask you to accompany us to the station. Do I look like I'm drunk to you? Here you are, sir. Save you a lot of trouble. talking they must have offered the guard a tremendous bribe they could have offered him fort knox if they planned to kill him afterwards and it proves one thing your belief in monsey working alone was wrong does it well, isn't that obvious nothing in this affair is obvious that's for sure except for one thing the opposition will stop at nothing till they get what they want it's therefore more imperative than ever that you carry out your test against M7 security system as quickly as possible. We've already taken certain steps in that direction, sir. I'm glad to hear it. I can expect action in the near future. I'd say in the immediate future. Good. The way he reacted, he didn't plant that code to be found. He could be double bluffing. Yeah, well, there's only one way to find out. Let's see if it works. Yeah, something's wrong. Very wrong. What you're saying, Sharon, is that Duncan's involved in some way. I don't know. But something's definitely off-key. Well, if it is, I'm with Craig. Let's find out what it is. What about the safeguard? The little trick that can stop you walking out of the vault? Yeah, I think we've got an answer to that. And if you have? Send flowers. Richard, under the circumstances, there is no sense in both of us putting our necks in the noose. So, call. What about me? Yeah, I got a feeling that uh, your talents can be better employed elsewhere, Sharon. Right, I got the same feeling. I disagree. You're outvoted, MacReady. Cool. Heads. Aren't you the lucky one? I lost. You won. The stripe's a bit narrow. And the blue's all wrong. I'm sorry. Near a Cambridge, I think. Good afternoon, sir. Ah, oh, good afternoon. I'd like to see some bow ties. Adjustable, sir? Adjustable. No, certainly not. No, no of course not. Huh? Moss green Irish poplin with a motif. You may have to make them up specially. A motif, sir? Yes, perhaps I could draw it for you. Do you have something that... Uh... Thank you. Pencil? I don't think so. Perhaps I should have said French blue. You know, near a grey. <clears throat> I'll see what we have, madam. Uh, it's not very good, but it might give you some idea. As it happens, sir, we have uh, something very similar in stock. What a splendid coincidence. Isn't it? Yes, that's almost perfect. I'd like to order half a dozen. Would you care to try it on, sir? Yes, yes, I think I would. If you'll just step Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, that will do, I think. Thank you very much, madam. I'll wrap it for you straight away. Now, I'd like something similar, only with a yellow stripe. Satisfactory, sir? Yes, thank you perfectly. I uh, anticipated your choice, sir. Thank you very much indeed. That will be six guineas, sir. Yes, uh, yes, of course. I can't make up my mind about that one. Yes, I'll take that. <coughs> oh. You uh, have a receipt for me, of course. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon.
Yes, officer, what is it? Are you aware, sir, that you went through that last intersection on a red light? No, I was not aware of that. And what is this, officer? What's the ch... Stupid move and you get it. You say so. So I was right, finally. It was a trap. Yeah. And who but Duncan could have sprung it? Unless he confided in someone else. Don't you remember? He said the whole object of the exercise was absolute secrecy. I remember. So? Thus, Mauncy was considered to be a 100% security risk, and now Duncan. Duncan. Head of British M7, wow. It doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. Well, fit or not, we'd better find out where Richard is. Perhaps we do that quickest through Duncan. You'd better go see him. Although I'd love to see his reaction when he finds out Richard didn't take the F-file. It looks like he didn't get the F-file out of the vault. We searched his car. There's nothing there except the neckties. You searched? You searched thoroughly? You're certain of that? Yes, yes, we are certain. Is it possible that he could have passed it to a fellow operator? No, no, there was no contact. You're quite certain of that also? Yes, we are. Well, you'd better be right. You understand? Yes, yes. There was no contact. See if he's recovered consciousness. Know he's being brought here. You should have more control. Try his pulse. How is it? Oh, he's all right. Just as well for both your sakes. You'll need to be very fit to stand up to my treatment. the F-file. I didn't take the file from the vault at all. Didn't? But that was the whole object of the exercise, the whole object. Taking the file wasn't. We were after the secrets it contained. Well, doesn't that amount to the same thing? Not quite. You see, we assumed, rightly or wrongly, that any safeguard or trap would be activated by the file itself, in the same way that the magnetized type brought on the gas to stop Monsey. Yes. Go on. But it did get the secrets. Isn't that the same as getting the file? Well, you couldn't have photographed them. And that's partly the reason why one's allowed only ten minutes in the vault. The time factor, you see. What other way is there? Memorizing the contents. <laughs> that's not possible. There are fifty pages of complicated dates, figures, patterns of latitudes and longitudes. When Barrett turns up, you'll write it all down, exactly as it is in the file. No, no, it's not possible. It's a fact, I promise you. And may I ask you a question? Did you tell anyone else about the F-file exercise? Of course not, no one. And how did the opposition find out about it? You're suggesting I'm implicated. You, Sterling, Barrett, or me. It has to be one of us, doesn't it? No. Who is that speaking? Duncan, you. Duncan? Yes. I'm so sorry, I have the wrong number. You're sure of this? Positive. It was in the call that Duncan received while I was in his office. And you recorded it as soon as you got back here? Yes. I'll play it at something over 20,000 cycles, which is exactly what they were doing. This is at a normal speed.
They must have planted an audio subliminal into Duncan's subconscious. No doubt they got to Muncie in the same way. Must be a control word, a hypnotic suggestion. Anyway, it's the best lead we've got yet. We better stick close to Duncan. I got a feeling he's going to be paying a visit to a dentist. Tell me, big brother, are you watching me? Yes, up and about. Sorry I've been so long. I hope it hasn't inconvenienced you too much. Not at all. But then I'm responsible, aren't I? Or rather my clumsy minions are. Well, you must be upset, angry, in fact. Why should I be angry? Well, there's no F-file. You mean my men weren't careless? On the contrary, they were very efficient. Why didn't you get the file? Uh, it's very simple. It was too well protected. Is that the truth? Well, I haven't got it, have I? I don't know. But I shall find out whether you're lying or not. Well, I think you're wasting your time. Uh, you'll never get it. <laughs> I'm surprised you should say that. Surely by now you realize I'm a most determined man. In fact, anything I want, I get. What happens if I stand here? I can't see you. But then you can't see me. However, we shall meet very shortly and the pleasure will be all mine. You said you were a very determined man. You're also very arrogant. What's the matter? The cat got your tongue? We must learn to take criticism, you know. I don't think so. I'll deal with you a little later, and then you'll really need your sense of humor, I promise you. Yeah. Also need a new jacket. I'd uh, like to see Mr. War. I have an appointment, Mr. Duncan. I don't think there's anything in the book. No, I'm afraid I haven't, but I'm in quite a bit of pain. Would you wait a moment, sir? Duncan's here, sir. He doesn't have an appointment. Now, that's all right. Show him in. Yes, sir. Come this way. Good afternoon, Mr. Duncan. You're rather fortunate. I had a cancelled appointment. What's the trouble? The same as before. Exactly. Really? Strange. Well, let's take a look at it. Get me Mr. Duncan's x-ray, will you? Now, just try to relax, Mr. Duncan. Now, just uh, have a look at your x-ray, Mr. Duncan. the F file. Didn't need to. He has a photographic mind. He recorded the contents. Memorized them entirely. You mean you followed me to Harley Street? Yes, that's right. I followed you. 
Well, look, Sterling, I know that you and Miss McGreedy suspect me. But... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We did. Don't anymore. However, we do think that you and Morsey are being used without you knowing it. Oh, nonsense. Now, look, sir. Time is very short. It's probably a lot shorter for Barrett. So please help me. Just answer my questions and I'll explain later. All right. Did you know that Monsey was a patient of wars? Oh, certainly. Matter of fact, he recommended war to me. Recently? Mm, yes, fairly. About four months ago. Now, you were there this afternoon. Did he do anything at all that was unusual? Mm, he felt a tooth, if you call that unusual. Now, think. Nothing. Nothing at all odd that you can remember. No, nothing. Now, look, Sterling. Wait a minute. Sir, I need you to help me. I have got to be sure that I am not making a mistake. I'm helping all I can. Okay, fine, fine. His equipment, was there anything unusual about it? It's very modern. Did he have a tape recorder in the office? Oh, yes, he did. Did you hear it playing? No, but... But what? I had the impression it was switched on. That's it. Thank you. We're ready for our young friend now. You want me to bring him up? Yes. Before you go, I want to warn you, this man Barrett needs watching. Keep him covered all the time. And if anything goes wrong, don't hesitate. I understand. Get him. We're going to work on our friend now. I want no disturbance. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. I'm going to lock this door now. Your presumption is correct. Yeah, dentist, that's not a bad cover. Sit down, please. Uh, there's no need. I had a checkup only last week. You're very humorous, but I insist you sit down. If you insist. Yeah, that's very impressive. No. No. Just try to relax. Isn't there a danger of me becoming too relaxed? It's not possible. I get the impression that you're not doing what you were saying. I was saying that I get the impression the impression 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 see Mr. Ward, Sergeant. I'm sorry, sir. That won't be possible. You're going to have to make it possible. The warning light's flashing.
Why didn't you knock? I'd have let you in. I didn't even know you were here. Came to see the dentist. Got a toothache. <laughs>